So this is our fourth of eight planned lectures, so four of eight. After today, we'll be halfway through this chapter on entropy, dealing how to quantify calculations associated with the second law of thermodynamics. Uh, we talked a lot about how to calculate uh, properties, the new property entropy, especially for steam and refrigerants, get it out of tables. If you have uh, incompressible substance, there's a great analytic expression for the change in the entropy is the specific natural log of T2 over T1, right? It's the specific heat times that. And then for an ideal gas, there's a great equation that the change in entropy, assuming constant specific heats, is C sub P natural log of T2 over T1 uh, minus R natural log of P2 over P1. And then we're going to talk about more on the property diagrams. And we did this last time. We got an uh, entropy balance equation, which is really a second law of thermodynamic statement. It's the statement of the second law in terms of entropy for a closed system. Next time, open systems. We have to move into open systems. But for today, all just closed system. So this is the big equation, the second law of thermodynamics. For a closed system, undergoing a process, so we have the change in the entropy, it can be positive, it can be equal to zero, it can be negative. You can accumulate entropy in the system, you can deplete entropy in the system, or the entropy could not change during a process. How can it change? It can be transferred in with heat. If there's a heat transfer in, it's bringing with it entropy. It can also go up by having entropy production due to friction irreversibilities. Irreversibilities. Can, uh, can the transfer with the heat, can it be positive? Can it be equal to zero? Can it be negative? Absolutely. Absolutely. It could be all three. And when it's well insulated and we say it's an adiabatic process, no heat transfer takes place during that process. What is that? It's equal to zero. Zero. When it's adiabatic, look for those key words, adiabatic. How about for entropy production? Can it be positive? Can it be zero? Can it be negative? It cannot be negative. No. It cannot be negative. That would make it impossible. That would be a violation of the second law. So if you ever do an analysis and you find sigmas less than zero, you either say to yourself, I made an error, or this is not physically realizable. It will not be realized in practice. It's a violation of the second law of thermodynamics. Oops. Last time, we'll talk a little bit about property diagrams. Let's revisit. There's one property diagram you're very familiar with. It's the pressure volume diagram. True? And think about a process going from state one to state two, and it undergoes some process like that. What's the value graphically of this property diagram? Well, one of the things is if it's for a closed system like we're studying, we're interested in calculating the boundary work. The boundary work. So the boundary work, 1 to 2, would be the integral PDV, true? If I write that with a cap V, what is this cap W? What would be the SI, typical SI units for that? Kilojoule, true? And recall that one kilojoule is a kilopascal times a meter cube. That's why I like to work with pressure in kilopascal, me personally, and volume in meter cubed. Okay? All right. What happens if somebody says, I have a plot, it's a PV diagram, but it's not that big V, it's the lowercase v. What's the difference between cap V and lowercase v? Specific is per unit mass. So we could calculate the work, 1 to 2, lowercase w, integral same p, but the uh, work is now per unit mass, just like the volumes per unit mass. Okay? Okay. 
Well, uh, let's do this. Let's think about a new property diagram. It's the temperature entropy. We'll do it cap S. And we'll think about starting at state 1, going to state 2 along a particular path. All right. So if we recall correctly, uh, the definition of entropy, uh, D S, let's do D cap S, D cap S is equal to del cap Q divided by T. As long as it's int rev. If it's internally reversible, there's no friction, there's no irreversibilities uh, occurring as you go along that, path, that process from one to two. Well, recall I mentioned last time, if you have a process where there's no irreversibilities, we in, in thermodynamics choose to use a solid line. What does that mean? No irreversibilities, or it's internally reversible. It's int rev. What happens if it's a dashed line? That's an indication that it is irreversible. There's some irreversibilities there. Okay. Well, when it's a solid line, when it's internally reversible from state one to state two, then what we could do is we can use this equation, and then what we have is del Q is equal to TDS. Can I integrate that? And I get Q, one to two, is equal to the integral TDS. Do you see the parallelism? So the area under the curve on a PV diagram a visual representation of the magnitude of that work term. The area under the curve, as long as it's an internally reversible process, on a TS diagram is a visual representation of the heat transfer in that process, Q1 to 2. All right, maybe I draw it like this, and then put the W1 to 2 there. So. Uh, more work if I expand it at higher pressure. Let's say the pressure at 1 and the pressure at 2 are greater than in that previous case, case A versus case B. Can you tell me which one has greater work, path A or path B? Greater area under the curve, path B, right? <coughs> then the same thing here. You could say greater heat, uh, uh, a greater magnitude of temperature, and you're changing from uh, state 1 to state 2, S1 to H, S2, that's the greater area under the curve, a greater transfer of heat. You could do this. You say, well, not only that, but I could take state 2 and put it out here. Right? Further expansion, greater work. I could take state 2 and put it out here. Greater heat transfer. True? If you wanted to, you could put this on a per unit mass basis. Q, lowercase q, 1 to 2 is equal to the integral T, D, lowercase s. True? See the parallelism? Now, a little trivia from mathematics is that you always learned how to do the integral from x1 to x2 of f of x dx. And I bet you in every calculus book, x1 was always less than x2. True? <laughs> Not always. Okay, well, good. Then you're, uh, when I took it, they never had it that way. I never saw it where they changed the limits, the direction of the limits. But if they go x2 to x1, how is that related? With the negative sign. With the negative sign. So, if you're expanding you're doing positive work out. If you're compressing, you're going this way, you're doing, you're, it's being compressed. It's a negative work out. It's actually work into the system. Remember, expansion, positive work, compression, negative work. Well, same thing here with the TS diagram. If it's going this way, right, it's heat coming in, bringing with it entropy, increasing S. 
You turn it around and you go the other way. I don't know how to clog up this diagram anymore, but I'll try it. Go that way. And what do you have? You have heat transfer out of the system. Entropy is going out, and the final entropy is going to be less than the initial entropy. So you could go both ways on the diagram, and we'll do that when we talk about the cycle. A cycle goes in a complete circle, right? And we put it on a PV diagram, we'll put it on a TS diagram, we'll interpret the area under curves for the work, as well as the area under the curve for the heat transfer. But let's solve a problem before we get to cycles. Water in a piston cylinder assembly. So it's a closed system and the fluid is water. It undergoes two internally reversible processes in series. So this is key words, internally reversible. Remember that, it's internally reversible, no friction. Okay. Each, for each process, determine the heat transfer and the work transfer. Well, they gave us some information in a table. They gave us some information in a plot. What is this plot? It's a temperature entropy plot. All right. What are we asked to solve for? We're asked to solve for Q1 to 2. That's the amount of heat transfer uh, for the first process. And we're looking for kilojoules per kilogram for the units. See, that they, they say, give me it in kilojoules per kilogram. All right, so that's what we're looking for. When I calculate it, I'll put the answer right there on the page. How about the work one to two? That's the next thing. It also has kilojoules per kilogram for the units. And then the heat transfer, two to three, and the work, two to three. So we're looking to calculate, I'm just going to say ditto, come on down there. Uh, all of these have the same units, kilojoules per kilogram. We're looking for four things we have to calculate. True? All right. So I look at my information. I try to understand what's given to me in the diagram. This first process, what's happening? Is S1 equal to S2? It's constant entropy. And when you have a constant temperature process, it's isothermal. A constant uh, enthalpy process, isenthalpic. Constant entropy process, it's uh, isentropic. Constant S, S equal to a constant. There's also isobaric, isochoric, a bunch of others, little ones, okay? Uh, is T1 equal to T2? No. Now, along the process from 2 to 3, what property do they say is constant? Pressure's constant. Now, we don't know exactly how it's shaped. You'd have to be really good to know, oh, it's, yeah, it's going to be shaped like that on a TS diagram. But there it is. All right. Is uh, T2 equal to T3? Nope. <laughs> nope. Is uh, S3 equal to S1 uh, or 2? Nope. Is, S2, is S3 greater? Yes. All right. So they give us the information about the properties for state 1, state 2, state 3. And they gave us the pressure and the temperature at both state 1 and state 2. But that's it. But that's it. It's water at this pressure of 100 kilopascal and 100 degrees C. It is slightly superheated, and it's in the superheated steam table. We can get the rest of those properties, knowing the pressure and the temperature. So we go and get those properties for the specific volume. It's 1.696. It's 2506.7. It's 2676.2. And it's 7.3614. I suspect I need these properties, so I might as well just get them, okay? Because the way I'm going to solve for these Q's and W's, I'm going to use the first law and the second law for each of those processes. And that's how I'll solve, but I'll need those properties. Now, they don't give me anything for state 2, do they? But they give me information for state 3. At 1 megapascal, which is 1,000 kilopascals, which is, what, uh, 10 bar? Uh, 
you in 400 degrees C, you can get the state, it's superheated vapor again, and you can get all the other properties. Let's get the properties. 0 0.3066 from the steam table to 9.57.3. 3263.9 and 7.4651. Now, what about state two? If I could get two independent intensive properties, then theoretically I can get all the other properties. Tell me which one property can I deduce from the problem statement? The pressure at state two is given to be the same as the pressure at state three, is it not? So it's one thousand kilopascal one megapascal what's the other property entropy isn't it it's the entropy so it's 7.3614 s1 is equal to s2 those two properties are independent intensive properties they fix the state out there in the superheated region and theoretically, with a little bit of work, interpolation, I can do it. So what we do is we find that the pressure of 10 bar, which is 1,000 kilopascal, didn't write 1,000 correctly, that pressure block in the superheated table, we look at the temperature, the specific volume, the internal energy, the enthalpy, the entropy values, we see at a line of 360 degrees C, the entropy is 7.3349. And at 400, the entropy is 7.4651. So our value of entropy of 7.3614 falls in between. And I like to always calculate the fraction of the distance between the lower value and the upper value. And it's about 20% of the way. That's the fraction to do the linear interpolation. Using that fraction, you can get these specific volumes. Well, first of all, the temperature, you just go ahead and interpolate the same way with that same fraction, and you get 368.1. And then you would get the same interpolation to get those other values. Let me go ahead and write the values in there. So it's uh, 368.1 degrees C. It's also... 0.29123 meter cube per kilogram. It's 2905.0 kilojoules per kilogram. And H is 3196.2. Maybe I don't need all those values, but I got them anyway. And it's probably a good exercise every now and then just to get all the values. Now, if I want to solve for Q1 to 2 and work 1 to 2, I'm going to apply the first law for the process 1 to 2 and the second law for the process 1 to 2 and see what it gives me. So let's write the first law for the process 1 to 2. Well, what does that equation look like? The final minus the initial internal energy is equal to the heat transfer in minus the, the boundary work out. Neglecting changes in kinetic and potential. There's nothing in the problem that had let me include kinetic and potential energy. I put it on a per unit mass basis, true. So, uh, hmm. I have two unknowns, and I know U1 and U2, but I need another equation. One equation with two unknowns work day and night, and you're not going to solve it. Mathematically, you need the same number of equations as the unknown. So we get to the second law. Second law of thermodynamics for the process 1 to 2. What's it look like? S2 minus S1 is equal to the integral del Q, whoops, del Q over T plus sigma 1 to 2. This temperature from 1 to 2, this integral of del Q over T goes from 1 to 2, right? One of these three terms, first clicker question, is equal to zero. Is it this term equal to zero, that term equal to zero, or that term equal to zero? All of the terms are equal to zero. Answer D if you like all of those terms are equal to zero for this problem. Somebody asked, 
Professor, what does this statement right here mean, internally reversible, that both of those processes is internally reversible? What does that mean, Professor? Hint, hint, you can change your answer. Here, I'll show you the answers that everybody's guessing at this point. This is like uh, this is like the primaries. Everybody's gonna follow the lead of Iowa and New Hampshire. Your last one to vote, forget it. You'll just go with whoever's the standing candidate, right? Is it A, B, C, or D? What is answer A? A says S two minus S one is zero. B says the integral del Q over T is zero. C says sigma one to two is zero. And D says all three of those terms are equal to zero. My candidate's now coming ahead. He's not, he's not in the lead yet. Oh, my candidate finally has stepped out. He's in the lead. There's always a few stragglers that don't want to get behind the correct candidate. Ah, thank you for falling in line, comrades. Keep going. Thank you, thank you. We need have two holdouts for B. Oh, I see he's pressing his friend's button up there. All right, I'm going to stop it, and whoever's not out there is going to be too bad. They got a wrong answer. I am an instructor. I'm an educator. I'm a teacher. There you go, see? Your score is all improved. So why is this term zero? Internally reversible. Why is this term zero? It's in the problem statement. In the problem statement. Hence, that term has to be zero, too. They're all three zero. Notice, if I have a curve that's straight up and down, what's the area under that curve? Nothing, nothing. So there's no heat transfer during that process. If it's a straight line, straight up and down on a TS diagram. It's just like we did this. If I had to have a process that went like this on a PV diagram, there's state one, there's state two. How much work was done in the process from one to two? Nothing, right? Same pro uh, uh, logic applies for the TS diagram. Very good. So what did we just conclude about Q1 to 2? It's zero. Now we can go back, well, this is equal to zero. Now we can calculate from the first law, the work one to two, true? And so the work one to two comes in to be negative 398 kilojoules per kilogram. It's just a difference in the internal energies. Okay, what are we gonna do to calculate Q two to three and work two to three? We're gonna do the first law for the process two to three and the second law for the process two to three. So we write down the first law. It's equal to U three minus U two equal to Q two to three minus work two to three. Is that correct? I look, is there any chance that I can calculate one of these entities? I know that I already have the internal energies from the table, but uh, can I maybe calculate Q two to three or W two to three? And I look again at this problem statement. Constant pressure. Can, can I calculate the work 2 to 3 as the integral of PdV? And if the pressure is constant, it comes outside. Hence, I just have that constant pressure, 1,000 kilopascal times V3 minus V2. The final specific, and I have the V's in the table, don't I? So let's go ahead and calculate the work, 1 to 2. It comes in at 15.4. I'm sorry, 2 to 3, you're right. Work, 2 to 3. Then that's done, so now I can calculate the Q. I don't even have to go to the second law for this process. So I calculate the Q, 2 to 3, and it's 67.7.
Two things I want to bring up. We finished this problem, but two things I want to bring up. Somebody says, hey, that's constant pressure heating. We've solved problems like that before. I recall this integral PDV, and then we take it, we lump it over to the other side, we match it up with the U's, and couldn't I have calculated Q2 to 3 is equal to H3 minus H2? Let me ask that question. Clicker question. Somebody says, I think we can do that. You say, yes, I agree. Or B, you say, no, you cannot do that for this problem. So answer A or B. Is Q2 to 3 equal to H3 minus H2? Answer A, yes, or answer B, no. All right, we ready to stop? Everybody in? All right, so let's go ahead and grade it. Pretty good, right? It is true, you can do that, definitely. One other point I wanna make, somebody says, let's write down the second law and see what it tells us anyway. Okay, so we write down the second law and we find that S3 minus S2 is equal to the integral of del Q over t plus sigma 1 to 2, right? Well, I know that's not, not 1 to 2, sigma 2 to 3. I know that the entropy production during the process one, from 2 to 3 is equal to 0. Why? Interrev. That's right, internally reversible. So I look at it and I know that, well, S2 and S3, I calculated, they're different, aren't they? They're not the same S. So, that's true that that is not equal to zero on the left-hand side. Could I have calculated the integral del Q over T analytically for this problem? That would be extremely challenging because we know T is changing during the process, but I don't know exactly how it's changing exactly during the process. I can say, you know what, as an engineer, you know, I can do integrals, and what I'll do is I'll say, I'm going to take 1 over the average temperature outside, multiply that by Q1 to 2, and that should be really close to S3 minus S2. Absolutely correct. It'll be very close, but will it be good to four digits? No. So sometimes in the second law, after you solve a lot of problems, what you find is that this problem to solve this one is very hard hard. The only time it becomes easy is when temperature is constant or it's adiabatic, Q is zero. Other than that, it's hard. So just tuck that away somewhere and say, you know what, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can do a better job of uh, calculating maybe integral PDV for a bunch of crazy cases, but the integral del Q over T is typically very hard and it's only doable when del Q is equal to zero, no heat transfer, or the temperature is a constant. Then it's easy. All right? All right. I'm done with that problem. Ready to move on? Have a couple clicker questions. I can't answer them all, but let's do this one. Let's ask this question right here. So for air, behaving as an ideal gas. It's air, and I'm saying it behaves as an ideal gas. The specific volume is a function of temperature. You agree? Yes. Or you say, no, it's not a function of temperature. Is the specific volume of air behaving as an ideal gas a function of temperature? Yes or no? Okay, is everybody in? Because I do have to cut it off. I got a bunch of questions here today. Let's go ahead and stop it. All right. Well, when somebody says ideal gas, what goes off in your brain? What are you thinking? Ooh, ooh, I recall this is true about an ideal gas. What's the number one truth? PV equal RT. 
Let's rewrite it as if V, I want to calculate it, it would be a function of R, T, and P. True? So, it's definitely a function of temperature. There it is. It's kind of a linear function of temperature. And V is inversely proportional to pressure, but it's linearly proportional to temperature. Okay. Uh, let's ask, uh, I don't know, entropy. Let's jump down here. Entropy. Is entropy for air behaving as an ideal gas, is that a function of temperature? Entropy. 30 seconds on this one. Everybody in? All right. So let's take a look. Well, when you say entropy of ideal gas, I'm, the easiest equation to recall is its constant specific heat. So uh, S2 minus S1, it's like how does the entropy change is equal to C sub P natural log of T2 over T1 minus R natural log of P2 over P1. So if P1 and P2 are different, pressure changed, it'll affect the entropy. If T1 and T2 are different, then the temperature changed, and that'll affect the entropy, right? So let's take a look at grading that one. Yes, entropy of an ideal gas is a function of temperature. True? Yeah. All right. Next slide. Uh, let's do, do you want to do this one? Let's try that one. For air, behaving as an ideal gas, enthalpy is a function of pressure. Yes, you agree, or no, you disagree. I will start the clickers now. And we just started them. Enthalpy is a function of pressure for an ideal gas, air behaving as an ideal gas. All right, I got to cut it off. We'll stop. Now, we recall whenever you see ideal gas, you say, aha, I recall PB is equal to RT. But that's one of the three things you recall. You also recall U is a function of T only, and H is a function of T only. True? Whose experiment demonstrated that? Watt or Joule? Joule, right? It's had some experiments with little cylinders and water bath, etc. All right, so uh, guess what? Is enthalpy a function of pressure for an ideal gas? It is not. It is not. Did I tell you my uh, World War II naming joke of somebody that went into the Army? So here it is. So a, bo a guy, true story, I'll change his last name, but I'm sure he's died now. He uh, was a young man, and the World War II broke out, and they were enlisting a bunch of people. They had a long line. And he was in South Austin, we're in South Texas and South Austin. They, uh, some people got named just by initials. Their first name is just A. The second name is C. There was an instructor here by AC. And anyway, but his was J-T. So he's in line, he gets up, what's your name? J, first name, okay, J-A-Y, no, no. J only, just the letter J only. So the guy put J and then he put in parentheses only. What's your middle name? T. How do you spell that? Just the letter T only. Put the letter T, parenthesis, only. Then his last name, which I'll just make up as Smith. But the next processing went down the line. Guess what got dropped? The parentheses. From then on in the Army, Jonely Tonely Smith. <laughs> True story. All right. So anyway, try to remember T only, T only, T only, H only. All right. Now another question, last one on this page. Entropy, air behaving as an ideal gas. Entropy is a function of pressure. Yes, I agree. Or no, it's not a function of pressure. All right. Everybody in? So let's go ahead and stop. And then 
I'm just going to, because I need to do this, I'm going to come back here. I'll do that. I'll do an edit. I'll do a copy, 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 copy. I'll come back over here. I'll do a paste, 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 paste. Where did it get pasted? Right there. That's what I'm going to use to help answer this question. So entropy is S. So if the temperature T1 is different than the temperature T2, uh, temperature changes, guess what's going to change? S is going to change. Uh, if P1 and P2 are different, they change a little bit, guess what's going to change? So we grade. Entropy is a function of pressure. Yes. Yes, it is. For an ideal gas, entropy. This always throws students for a loop because they get into the rhythm that, oh, U is a function of T only. I got it. H is a function of T only. I got it. S must be a function of T only. No, you ain't got it. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a function of temperature and pressure for an ideal gas. Now, somebody says, what about when you have the S2 naught, a function of T2 minus S? Well, you can get rid of the subscript there uh, and this subscript and put an S naught, function of T1 minus R, natural log of P2 over P1. That's the same. It's just you're using variable specific heats and you have to go get the tables for S naught. But it's the same. It's a function of temperature and pressure. Carnot power cycle on our favorite diagrams, on a pressure volume diagram and on a temperature entropy diagram. Well, first of all, before I start plotting it on diagrams, I have to recall, what are we talking about? Carnot what? That was a couple weeks ago. Carnot power cycle. Let's do a quick review. So you have a trapped amount of fluid, typically air is an ideal gas. It's in a piston cylinder assembly. So you have a heating of it from pro a process from state one to state two, and it's expanding as you're heating it such that it holds something constant, temperature constant at the high temperature. Then you undergo a process two to three where you continue to expand, but it's now adiabatic. It's doing work, pushing up that piston. The temperature drops. The temperature changes from TH to TC. Then from three to four, you have the compression, the first of two compressions, and you're cooling it, heat transfer out as you cool it, and it maintains a constant temperature, T low or TC, cold. And then you have a rapid adiabatic compression, four to one, where there's no heat transfer, and the temperature jumps back up from TC to TH. So when you hear Carnot power cycle with the gas, think of four processes, all of them are internally reversible. One to two is isothermal expansion, then two to three, adiabatic expansion, then isothermal compression, adiabatic compression. So it's like expansion, expansion, compression, compression, isothermal, adiabatic, isothermal, adiabatic. Okay, now armed with that, and reminder right in front of us of what we just agreed to, let's draw it for an ideal gas like air on a power cycle. So we would put on a pressure volume diagram, first of all we put two lines of constant temperature for ideal gas. There'd be a line like this and a line like that. One is at TH, one is at TC. They're mathematically asymptote to the axes True. We talked about that. It obeys the ideal gas equation. Put state one, have isothermal expansion, adiabatic expansion, isothermal compression, adiabatic compression. Where do I have heat transfer in? Q in is a positive Q1 to 2. The heat transfer out, Q out, is a negative Q3 to 4, meaning Q3 to 4 is naturally going to be negative by the traditional sign convention. So if I want to talk about a positive out, it's a, it's a negative Q3 to 4. Sometimes they put a little mark like this, meaning what? There's no heat transfer. 
from 2 to 3. It's, it's adiabatic. I won't clutter, clutter up that diagram more. Whoops, look at that. I erased it. Let me try and fix it quickly. All right. Okay? All right. Now, uh, if you wanted to, you could do the area under the expansion. So 1 to 2 is some area, then 2 to 3. The area all under that is what? The work out during the half of the cycle. And then if you wanted to do the area under the curve from 3 to 4, and then under 4 to 1, that's going to be worked back in during the compression. The difference is the shaded area enclosed on that diagram. What is that a representation of? The network, which is the sum, work 1 to 2 plus work 2 to 3 plus work 3 to 4 plus work 4 to 1. The work for each of those processes that make up the cycle. So if you want a lot of work out for every cycle, make that area big. Make that a big area that's enclosed on a PV diagram. All right, next prop, prop uh, uh, diagram is a temperature entropy diagram, is it not? All right, hmm. Can we draw a line of constant temperature like TH on a TS diagram? What does it look like? Straight line. And a constant line, TC. Do you know the process 1 to 2 is on the TH? So it's either going to be 1 is here and 2 is here or have switched to vice versa, right? But which way is heat coming into the system at that high temperature expansion from 1 to 2? So this is where state 1 is and that's where state 2 is. Notice that the entropy at 1 and the entropy at 2, entropy went up. How did it go up? Write the second law for the process 1 to 2. You'll see that you bring in heat. Even if it's internally reversible, entropy goes up. Then we go from process 2 to 3. What's happening in that process 2 to 3? The key word is right here. It's adiabatic. All right, no heat transfer, and it's internally reversible. Where is S3? Straight down, and it's going to lay on the line of TC. So there is the process, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Now, where do you think state 4 is at? Underneath 1. And then back up. So it's a really clean and easy diagram on a TS. The Carnot power cycle on a TS is just a box, just a rectangle. All right. The area under this curve 1 to 2, what does that visually represent? The heat in. And then the area under the curve 3 to 4, what does that visibly represent? The heat out. And so the, the difference between them is the area enclosed. And what does that represent? Oh, it just erased it. What does that represent? The Q net, the net heat transfer for that cycle. It's the sum of Q1 to 2 plus Q2 to 3 plus Q3 to 4 plus Q4 to 1. Now, I know for this one, 2 to 3 is 0 and 4 to 1 are 0 because they are adiabatic processes, right? Glass clicker question for the day. Somebody says, wow, work net, compare it to Q net. Is it, uh, e is it greater than, equal, or less? Answer A, B, or C. The work net compared to the uh, Q net. If work net is greater than Q net, answer A. If work net is equal to Q net, answer B. If work net is less than Q net, answer C. Is everybody in on this one? Everybody in? No, still thinking? You know, you can sit next to a friend and you can talk. I just don't want one smarty pants in the front row standing up and saying, all right, everybody, 
A, answer A. You know, I don't want that. But if you have friends, you know, I mean, you, it's, there's no, pro, you're not prohibited from talking in class to a friend when I ask a clicker question. Actually, it's slightly encouraged. Slightly encouraged. All right, let's go ahead and stop it and grade it. And it's a really good review, isn't it? And it always amazes me, no matter how clearly I teach something out of chapter 2. Or how clearly I teach it out of chapter 3, I've got to review it again and again and again. So, they're equal. They're equal. QNet and WorkNet are equal. We'll use that continually throughout the rest of this class and the Thermo 2 as well. Well, with that, I must call it quits. Thank you for your attention.